I've now built and reviewed four 3018 CNC's, so what makes this one different from the rest? Well, you're about to find out in this review and demonstration of the SaneSmart 3018 Prover V2 CNC. Let's jump right in. First of all, the website claims that you can set up this machine in under 20 minutes, so I'd like to see if that's actually true. I set up a stopwatch and started unboxing. As we've seen before from SaneSmart, everything comes well packaged and with clearly labeled instructions for assembly. I've assembled many other desktop CNC's, so it might take a first timer a little longer, but I managed to finish the physical assembly in 20 minutes. It does, however, take an additional 5 to 10 minutes to complete the wiring and cable management. Speaking of cable management, this is the best cable management I've seen on a CNC so far. There are cable sleeves, special cutouts, label tags, and they even block off unused connectors with dummy plugs so you can't mess up the wiring. Every detail is well thought out down to where each wire goes. This is very refreshing in comparison to some of the other CNC's I've assembled that just throw a bag of zip ties at you and say good luck. I mean, that is complete spaghetti back there. Most of the accessories are packaged in this neat little box instead of being thrown into a million baggies. All of these bags are from my other CNC assembly videos. Another notable mention after setting up the CNC is the offline controller. All of the other CNC's use this cheap little offline controller, while SaintSmart went and built their own controller that's more feature-rich and easier to navigate. This also allows you to very easily use the CNC without having it hooked up to a computer. This CNC also has convenient jog wheels for manually setting your work zero point. SaintSmart also has thankfully addressed one of my biggest pet peeves in other CNC's. It finally has a sealed electronics enclosure where only the heat sinks stick out. This keeps chips from getting into the electronics while allowing the motor drivers to be cooled and of course, a sealed power supply to go along with it. Now let's stop talking about this thing and actually start machining. I'm gonna test this machine a little more rigorously than I have my other machines by doing some three-dimensional carving on it. I started with this flower in some soft plastic as a first test run. It came out with some burrs because it was my first time doing 3D carvings on Fusion 360, so I hadn't dialed in my feeds and speeds yet. Now to move on to something a little more challenging. I'm going to try to CNC this horse with wings into a block of wood. The plan was to first use a larger end mill to clear out most of the material. For this, I would use a 1 quarter inch square end mill. Then, to add the details, I would use a smaller end mill. For this, I planned on using a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill. For these cuts, I set my feed rate very, very aggressively to try to push the limits of the machine, and it held up surprisingly well. The frame is straight rigid, and there's very little backlash. If you're looking to do something more simple, Easel will also work on this machine just as well for 2D carving and more art type projects, or for beginners looking for a simple and user-friendly software. No matter what software you use, this machine should be able to run its G-code through Candle or the offline controller. When using Fusion 360, this is the kind of thing that the 3018 CNC is capable of. By the way, the line at the top here isn't the CNC's fault. I didn't tighten my quarter inch bit enough and it got pulled out of the collet. Another key feature of this machine is how forgiving to mistakes it is because it has limit switches in both directions on each of the three axes. These limit switches prevent you from crashing and damaging your machine if you accidentally tell it to go outside the machinable area. This had saved me so many times when I was learning how to make toolpaths for 3D carving. While the work area isn't huge, it is big enough for most small projects. Additionally, if you're trying to engrave something larger than the work area, you might still be able to with this machine. If the workpiece hangs off the front or back, that's okay, and you're still able to machine anything within the work area. I know a lot of people have asked how loud this machine is, so I'm going to record its volume in comparison to other household devices. Here we go. I think despite the price, this CNC is still very competitive. Its ease of use and attention to detail stand out among other CNCs. You really get what you pay for in high quality parts, and overall, it's a very capable machine. I think any beginner could put together this machine without any problems. This kit is really for someone who wants to use the machine as a CNC without having to debug, repair, or tinker with it to get it to work. If you want something high quality that just works right out of the box, this is it. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next video.